lessons I learned from Acts of the Apostles chapter 1 to 5. Let's see if time permits, we'll take five of those lessons. When we are through, you collect Brother Shemso. So I will not pause the keyboard. So let's look at the first one, you know. Um, very important lessons, so very important lessons. And like I always tell people, lessons are always part of you. When things happen, I always ask her. When they come to see me for counseling, hey, Papa, this happened to me. I always ask, what did you learn from this? You know, the experience can come and go, but the lesson that you, you pick from every experience stays with you forever. You know, one of the lessons I've learned in this, my I'll be 49 years old, July this year. Now, one of the lessons I've learned in this, my 49 years of being on earth is this. Don't commit anything to people and close your eyes. I've learned that lesson. No matter what you commit to anybody's hands, please don't close your eyes. I don't say Lagbaja is there, so there's no problem. That one, that's one of the lessons I learned in between last year to this year that I will never let go from my life. That when you... Before I used to commit things to people's hands and I would just close my eyes. I, I know that person is there. But listen, I have discovered that nobody can be me. I've learned that. So when I commit things, listen, I must always go back to check. In Genesis, the Bible says, and God said, and God saw. Now, he will, whatever he says, he will go back to observe. And the Bible says, and God saw that it was good. So mama so we are like a problem especially those of you that are leaders god have put businesses uh, ministries in your hands don't commit things to people's hands and turn your back and believe that without checking things will continue to go right so let's look at today acts acts chapter one four and five our first lesson acts of the apostles chapter one verse four and verse five acts chapter 1 4 and 5 now I read and being assembled together with them commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem but wait for the promise of the father which said he you have heard of me verse 5 which said he you have heard of me for John truly baptized with water but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Now when I read this scripture, now this was Jesus our Lord speaking to the disciples when he was about to depart from them. Wow, this widow thought that today's last Sunday is next week. So, you know, after he had trained them, prepared them for ministry, he was about to be taken away. The Bible says he now gave them this final instruction that see you Make sure that you don't rush into, the, into going to preach all over the place until you receive the promise of the Father. The promise of the Father, which is the Holy Spirit. It is after you must have received the Holy Spirit that you can go in for ministry. Now, what's my lesson? There is no how you can have a victorious life, hear me, in brackets, a fulfilled life as a believer if you do not have a talking relationship with God I will explain there is no how you can have you can live a victorious life in brackets a fulfilled life as a believer if you do not have a talking relationship with with God now look, look, you know finish right so I will explain is it from this this particular scripture you see that what Jesus said to them he did not say the Bible says he gave them an instruction many days from stay in Jerusalem. Oh, in some days' time, you are going to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Then you can go out to preach. Now, what do I mean? There are certain instructions of God that you need to hear from the Holy Spirit that you won't hear by studying scriptures. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. That's why, if you are a Christian, you do not develop your ability to hear God you might not be able to enjoy certain victories. Because there are certain junctions you will get into your, you get to in your life that you will need an instruction from the Holy Spirit to break through. There are certain junctions. I will tell you some ex practical experience. 
So, omo Olorun ti o ba mo ba se n go won Olorun. To ni on gbogbo ti mo mo ni pe kin sha ti study Bible can gain. Yes, the Bible is like the foundation is the foundation not like is the foundation of all. You study the scriptures to differentiate the voice of God, the voice of your thought and the voice of the devil because these three voices sound the same. But it is Bible knowledge that helps you to differentiate that this one is not God. It is Bible knowledge that helps you to differentiate that this one is not uh, 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 my, this is not my flesh, this is Satan. Are you getting what I'm saying? But listen, even in studying the scriptures, we have the Holy Spirit given to us by God for so that we can have access to specific instructions. A lot of Christians miss their time because they do not pay attention to the voice of the Holy Spirit for them to be able to hear the instruction that will open their door. I wrote here, apart from you studying the Bible, there are instructions you need to hear from God if you will gain access to a victorious life in Christ. Now, for instance, as he's seated right there now, maybe something wants to happen, either in the positive or in the negative, that will require for him to stand up. He may not need to say, let me open my Bible. Hello? There could be an instruction from his heart, you know, from the Holy Spirit, towards his heart, shame, he himself will know that this is an instruction. She stand up now. Now, I remember when we were trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Three years after marriage. And you know that first year after marriage, people will think you are playing. But second year, people will begin to look at you. And when they begin to ask your wife, they greet you, ah, you know, no more. Uh, uh, they will ask you, the women are the ones that feel it first before they now begin to pass the baton of worry to the husband. Now, it got to a point. When we started taking, you know, uh, taking medications, you know, taking steps on how to, uh, how to have our children, we took steps. Now, I remember during the process, I, I don't usually forget that encounter. During the process, we were instructed, don't meet yourselves until after this woman concludes, completes the whole medication. So she had done the first set for about, uh, I think, about uh, 13 days. Then she was to go to take the second set that will also take another 14 days of two weeks. She was dressing up to go and take that one. I asked God clearly, meet your wife now. I heard clearly. And the instruction, they told us, Esuma sumora yo. That was medical instruction. And I acted upon what I had. Do you know that she, she collected the second one that was to wait for two weeks before she will use it? Two weeks after that, uh, 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 completion of two weeks, she started feeling somehow. Whenever she wants to take the, the medication, she start throwing up. I said, keep this medication. Hold on. And that medication, they said, that one is the one that will fertilize the womb, which after two weeks you can meet her, then we'll now see what to do. Do you know that she never used that medication until she got pregnant? Child of God, develop your ability to hear God. The victory you are praying for, it's only one instruction that can, that can take you to it. One, one thing. Now look at when Joshua uh, was leading Israel. And the city of Jericho, God told them, I'll give you the city. They were preparing to go and fight. Only one instruction. Joshua, you won't need to fight in this battle. What do we do, sir? He said, just go and be marching around. Go and be marching around. Once a day, and on the seventh day, seven times. And on that seventh day, blow ram's horn. It was specific. It didn't say blow any kind of trumpet. The, ra the horn of a ram. Not the horn of an antelope. Not a, the horn of a cow. The horn, horn of a ram. And on the seventh day, as he blew that horn, po! the Bible says the city, the walls of Jericho came down. Please, child of God, pay attention to how God speaks to you. Praise the Lord. I didn't hear you. I say praise the Lord. This is why it is important you develop your relationship with the Holy Spirit so well. 
Now look at the excitement of the Holy Spirit in John chapter 14 verse 26. John chapter 14 and verse 26. See the assignment of the Holy Spirit. John chapter 14 and verse 26. Labor satire, that's it. Look at it. It says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. What is his job? He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you, look at he shall teach you all things. Sir, he shall teach you how to conquer in that battle you are facing. He shall teach you how to conquer over that Goliath that is threatening. But you know what the problem is? So many children of God are not paying attention enough. And when you are not paying attention, it's like, I remember the time I bought, uh, somebody gave me um, uh, a notepad. Samsung Galaxy notepad. I didn't read the manual. I didn't know that I needed to read the manual. As they gave me, once it me installation, so they've opened it. Anytime I was going for conference, look at me, oh. I will carry my Bible. As big as this. I will carry my jota and I will hold my pad. So, during service, I will be looking at pastors with their notepad. You know, that was why notepad was raining. They will open their pad, they will be typing. When they call scripture, I will see that they won't need to, they didn't carry any Bible. Why me I'm battling to open my own? The only thing I knew how to do then was, there's this part that I'll use a stick, like a stick, to write my note. So I got back home. Ah, a mission mama didn't come at my notepad, my di Bible, my to my jota. So I now went back to the manual. It was in the manual I discovered that I can install all the Bibles, Bible versions I need. One, two, I can be typing what I want to type. Three, two, then number three, I discovered that. Whatever I want to write as using the pen, I can be saying it and the part will be typing it for me. Ah, money foolish me. So I tried it. When I get to the conference, this pastor we call the scripture, I will open it. You know what I just do? I'll click on it and go and paste it on the note. I'll click on it and go and paste it on the note. It became so easy for me. Life becomes easy when you have access to instructions. That's why can I tell you, your greatest friend is your instructor. Your greatest friend is the Holy Spirit. If you have a coach that instructs you physically, listen, that's your greatest friend. People struggle today for lack of one thing. They lack instruction. So I wrote here, it is important you develop your relationship with the Holy Spirit. It is important you create time to know how he speaks to you. You know why? Because he speaks using several methods. Open vision, dreams, intuitive perception, inner witnessing, audible voice. But you pay attention to the particular one. Maybe someone like me, I would have died by now. And the reason is because there was a journey I wanted to embark on. I and some of my family members. But that morning, I just did not have a release in my spirit. I tried to, we had agreed in the night we were traveling together. I just didn't have that release in my spirit. As I got there, my mom said, Pastor, you are the one we are waiting for. I said, I just don't know. I don't feel like going. It was my younger brother that was traveling out, relocating abroad. And the whole family said, let's follow him to the airport, wish him well, see that he's checked in, then we'll come back. Then as my mom said, okay, yes, my grand, uh, her granddaughter, the only grandchild as at that time, he didn't know, second grandchild, was to travel with her. I just told her, as I said, I'm not going. I said, bring Eba Migwechi Somo. Don't let her also go. Ah. My mommy said, Pastor, 
I said, don't let her go. I didn't know that there was going to be an accident. They dropped him at the airport. He was checked. As they were coming back, they said the car somersaulted seven times. The only person that was in the car, that remained in the car as the car was somersaulting, was the driver because he was on seatbelt. All the others, pew, pew, into the forest. They were looking for my mother, my mom, inside the bush. You know, it was from there she contacted the sickness that she nursed and nursed until she died. You know, when she came out, he said, ah, pastor, you are wicked. I said, ma, I don't understand. He said, you have seen this thing and you didn't tell me. I said, I didn't see anything. I just didn't have a release in my spirit to travel. Pay attention to how God speaks to you. He said to them, stay in Jerusalem. That's the letter I learned. Some instructions of God, hear me, can only be backed up from scriptures for you to know that it's God, but will not come directly from the scripture. One of our daughters, after I shared this kind of my experience like this, how God gave us our first child, you know, I told everybody they had issue, issues. I said, go and pray. Uluwa fi homi. Uluwa mi sopi ashiri ogumi ba yo mu ni lati mashiri ogumi. Solution ni koko abi. Kila kini uh diti mu yvema shiri timi ma solution. Yo luwa ibe se wuni king be to gwaye mi ofi share. Tinti mun la ko jai ti ma fi bore. That was the prayer I told them to pray. I I won't forget. Turayo umo. One of our ministers here was praying. She slept off. She said she saw that an angel, a man was flying and came to her and gave her a sachet of drugs. He said, go and use this. And she woke up. She quickly consulted me. Sir, you are the one that taught us that we should go and pray. I've prayed. This is what I saw. Ah, I said, ma, with the interpretation I've seen, your case is medical. He said, no, sir. No, sir. If God cannot do it, I won't go before any man. I said, Madam, your case is medical. The angel gave you a sachet. It's medical. For the angels, the spirit, to refer you to what is physical. Your case is physical. She insisted, no. Come alone. Until when another woman shared testimony. She now came to meet me, Papa. I came with Shetan, so I, I referred her to somebody. As the doctor saw her, the doctor didn't know what we saw because we didn't tell her. I mean, tell him. The doctor said, uh, You know what, madam? Let me give you this uh, drug to go and regulate your menstrual flow. And the doctor gave her one sachet. He said, By the time you finish using it, you and your husband should meet yourself so so and so time. Then if nothing happened, I will know that you need serious medical attention. Do you know that after the next appointments, the doctor gave us three months after she was pregnant. That baby now, I think Dara should be about 16 years. She should be 16 now. develop a, a, a talking relationship with God so that when you get to certain junctions, you don't know what to do. He tells you what to do. That's the first lesson I learned. Let's look at number two. Second lesson. Or before I summarize this one, don't forget, what, how do you develop a relationship with God? Listen. It is only one thing. And what is that? Create time to hear God. He said, draw near to me, I will draw near to you. Create time. After you must have studied scriptures, hear me, you meditate over it, you can keep quiet and say, blessed Holy Spirit, please speak to me over this. After you must have finished praying, you have prayed all the prayers, keep calm, Holy Spirit, speak to me. After you must have finished worship, you've worshipped the Lord, 
You know that you enjoy the worship is so connecting. Holy Spirit, speak to me. See, every time you create time for God, He creates time for you. He's always available to them that makes time for Him. He said, Call upon me and I will answer thee. And I will show you great and mighty things that you know it not. But if you are proving to be too busy, I don't have time, I don't have time. He won't, he won't have time for you too. Number two, second lesson. Acts chapter 1, 15 to 20. My second lesson too is from Acts 1. Acts 1. Let's learn from Judas. From verse 15 to verse 20. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, The number of names together were about 120. Move on. Men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took him. Which was guide to them that took him. For he was numbered with us and had obtained a part of our ministry. Wait for me here. He obtained a part of our ministry. He was numbered with us. He obtained a part of our ministry. Yes, next verse, verse 18. Now, this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity and falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst and all his bowels gushed out. Move on, we'll stop at 20. And it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem in so much as that field, sorry, in so, in so much as that field is called in their proper tongue, Akaldama. That is to say, the field of blood. Verse 20. For it is written in the book of Psalms, let his habitation be desolate and let no man dwell therein and his bishopric let another take. Now what is the message? That I want us to pick here. Beloved, it is important you know that you can lose your place with God if you persistently practice wrong attitudes. Beloved, it is important you know that you can lose your place with God if you persistently practice the wrong attitude. You can lose your place. Listen, nothing is automatic. Hello, me and yeah. God has given me. God cannot fake it. God has given me. It's with me forever. You can lose your place. I love how the Good News Bible puts verse 20. If you have the Good News Bible on your notes, show us. Good News Bible, verse 20. You can lose your place. You can lose your place. If your attitude is wrong, your results can never be right. That's why whatever level, whatever gifting, whatever thing you receive from God requires that you maintain it with good attitude. Look at this. For it is written in K, the book of Psalms, may his house become empty. May no one live in it. It is also written, may someone else take his place of service. May you not lose your place. I wrote here, beloved, it is important you know that you should always know, you should always live up to the standard of your assignment. To back to any evangelist, live up to it. If they call you a pastor, live up to it. If you are, whatever they call you, please make sure, do not allow your, your attitude to be lower than whatever office you occupy. Look at it. He said, let his service be given to somebody else. What made him lose his place? It was greed. What, has made, what is making some people to lose their place? Laziness. In fact, the same thing is applicable in business. You can lose your clients when you are lazy. Learn to live up to. The standard of your assignment so that you will not lose it. Live up to the standard of your assignment so that you will not lose it. People lose what they have when they do not 
value standard. People lose what they have when they do not value standard. People lose what they have when they do not value standard. That's why you see that some clients will now begin to move from one place to the other. Ah, may you not fall from grace. It was greed that made Judas lose what he had. Please watch out for attitudes that can make what you have fall from your hands. Watch out for attitudes that can make what you have. You know, yesterday I was teaching at the Elebu Bible School. It's every Saturday morning, 7 a.m. to 8.30. So one of the uh, students is an evangelist from another ministry. He said, Daddy, Daddy, the camera person is not even here. Camera woman. He was now saying, Daddy, she said, I'm going to go to church. She said, I'm going to go to church. She said, I'm going to go to church. She said, I'm going to go what's the first topic I taught them influence pastor you know, he said, sir, one deep boba. He said, you taught us in influence that, sir, even if you borrow something, return it according to province. Don't say after I'm there, neither nothing will happen. He said, that is the issue with the pastor of the church I was attending. He said, they will ask you for something, they will not return it. He said so many things. He said, that's why, sir, it got to a point I could no longer cope. He said, and it's not only me. He said, we all have left. You know, I heard, I hear that there are pastors going around to collect tithes from people's houses. They will knock your door. A castle, bill. A castle. A pele. It damn well in our I'm telling you a true story. Not if it, uh, pastors that will come to you, knock your door in the morning. I, I walk by door for you, and by the time they finish praying, or they will link You can lose what you have if you continue to practice the wrong attitude. Judas was a, was one of the, the bishops, but the Bible says he lost it. It was his greed. May you not lose what you have. Say, I, I, didn't, I didn't hear you. Say, I would, may I not lose what I have. That's why, if you notice that things are gradually draining, find, don't start blocking the, the, the holes. Find out what created those holes. That's the first thing. Now, once you find out what's the reason why this thing is like this, you begin to block it. That's why if there's anything I love most about our church, I love feedbacks. When I send people out, I ask them, okay, okay. When people call and they say, sir, I was angry. Tell me the reason why you were angry. Let's take number three. Let's take one more. May you not lose what you have. I say, may you not lose what you have. I say, may you not lose what you have. This scripture is long. Acts chapter 3, 7 to 16. Now, while they bring out the scripture, what's the third lesson? Never allow anyone give you the glory that belongs to God if you will remain relevant. Never allow anyone give you the glory that belongs to God if you will remain relevant. Acts chapter 3 from verse 7 to verse 16. Look at this. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Verse 8. Received strength. So he, leaping up, stood and walked, entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. Verse 9. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. 
Everybody saw him. He was walking and praising God. That's the crippled man. Then they knew that it was he who sat begging arms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened. That's the man that used to beg for arms. Move on. We'll stop at 17. That's the man that used They were full. Yes. Now, as a lame man who was healed, held, look at this, held to Peter and John. And the people ran together to them in the porch, which is called Solomon's Greatly Amazed. He held unto them. I want to So when Peter saw it, what did he do? He responded to the people. Men of Israel, why do you marvel at us? Or why look at so intently at us? As though by our own power or godliness, we have made this man walk. Please, sir. If you will remain relevant, no matter how much people try to give you the glory that belongs to God, please don't take it. That's one thing God will never share with anyone. No matter how much people try to give you the glory that belongs to God, look at that. So Peter said, It's not by our godliness, it's not by our own holiness, it's not by our power. Verse 13 that we made this man walk. He he instantly showed them back the God of Abraham. The God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorify the servant Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate, when he was determined to let him go. Verse 14, verse 14, fast, fast. But you denied the Holy One. Now, can you see, he instantly referred back. That's why I see, no matter how good you think you are, you are not the one doing it. Hello. There are people that are better than you that are still struggling. There are people that are better than you that don't have the opportunity you have. So when people try to see you as an extraordinary human being, instantly, I love how Mommy Adijuma used to say it, uh, handle it. He says, See, handle glory given to you by men like chewing gum. Chew it, the sweetness, and throw the gum away. Which means, Take whatever they give you as gift and what? Give the glory back to the owner. That's the best way to remain relevant. A lot of people that God blessed are no longer on the top. Go and find out why. A lot of them took the place of God. An example of it is in Acts. Acts chapter 12. 22 and 23. Acts 12, 22 and 23. Then immediately, as an, then immediately, an angel of the Lord struck him. Why did the angel struck him? No, I said 22 and 23. You showed us 23. Go back to 22. So that they can understand the event. And the people kept shouting, the voice of a God and not of a man. Oh, Lord, then immediately an angel of the Lord struck him. Who was that? Herod. Because why? He did not give glory to God. And he was eaten by worms and he died. So that's the third lesson I learned. And I learned it from Acts chapter 3, 7 to 16. I discovered this about God. God always walks behind the scene. You won't see him. He doesn't want to show up. He always likes to use human hands. But one thing he will never tolerate is for those he used to now sit down as if they are the doer. That will be the end. When Samson thought he was the doer, look at what he said to Delilah. Samson, Samson, the Philistines are here. He said, as usual, I will arise. As usual, I will go against them. As usual, I will tear them in pieces. All he was saying is, I, I, I. Compare it with David when he faced Goliath. Goliath said, am I a dog that you have come to me with stones and sticks? 
I will give your head to the beast of the air. He said, the God whom I serve, whose army you are defiling today. Can you see? He was not talking about himself again. He allowed God to reign. That's why for you to remain relevant, hear me, never take the glory that belongs to God. Let me stop here because of time. Never take the glory that belongs to God. I always tell my daughters, anytime they, have, they, have, they say I should pray for them to face an exam. I learned this one too from one of our daughters in church. I learned it from Dickness Kike. Former Adi Dayo that is now Jai Simi. That lady has never failed an exam in her life. So I was asking her one day, Dickness Kike, what is your strategy? Go fail exam, go con read like yeah. Never repeated the class. Never did one exam twice. I think she's in doing her master's now. She said, Papa, this is my formula. I pray. Sorry, I, I read the Bible. Bible. I read as if there is no God to help me. And by the time I finish reading, I pray as if I never read anything. He said, when I want to read, I read as if there's no God to help me. I read well. He said, and when I want to pray, I pray as if I never read. Lord, Kishen Konti Moka. So I use that principle to teach my children in the house. Whenever they call, uh, they call Daddy, uh, Daddy, the exam that I'm going in for now is legal method. Sir, I want to go and face legal method. It's one of the most difficult courses. I said, see, uh, did you read? He said, yes. Are you sure you read? He said, Daddy, I've read. I said, don't trust in what you have read. Thank God for what you have read. But just say, Holy Spirit, help me. And by the time she comes out, she calls. How was the exam? Daddy, it was like I was eating biscuits and drinking Coke. If you put God in his place, you will be the one to enjoy it. Look at our women. That's, that's, their song. that's the song we'll be singing in this convention too. They want to start their meeting. What would they always say? I have no power of my own. Even when you have strength, trust in the strength of our maker, God. I went back to go and listen to the story of this Titanic ship. I don't know if you watched that movie. A true life story. They said the man that constructed the Titanic ship, that designed it, brought in engineers to do it by the time he finished it he made one stupid and careless statement and what was the statement he said the way this titanic ship is designed even god will not be able to sink it ah it's an insult so all most of the rich people in their country decided Okay, we are going on a cruise. You know what a, a cruise is? You are going on a holiday in a ship. So they all will be in the ship. There's nothing you want to eat that you will not eat. The ship can be going from country, from nation to nation. It could, at times, it could be for one month. One month cruise, three months cruise, depending on the one you apply for. They were going on this cruise. They said the man in charge, uh, the captain that was in charge, was the best among the best. He saw the ice bag. He said, this one cannot do anything to the Titanic. Go through it. He didn't know that there was a rock underneath. May the devil not succeed to push you against God. Nobody will want to fight God physically. But look at the satanic trick is to make you proud. To make you want to take the glory that belongs to God. I have no power of my own. I have no power of my own. Let me hear you. Holy Spirit, I look up to you. Help me. I have no power of my own. Let's rise up on our feet this morning.
Without the help of the Holy Spirit, beloved, we can't go far. So when men try to give you the glory that belongs to God, what should you do? Return it instantly. Return it instantly. I was, I was learning from Pastor Adeboye. People don't know the reason why. Everybody sees him as the father of the gospel. But whenever he comes to the altar, what is his first practice? He will kneel down. And he will choose a song bigger than the biggest, stronger than the strongest, mightier yeah, than the mightiest. To show the people that I am man, if not for him in my life, I won't go far. That's why the Bible says the race is not to the swift, the battle is not to the strong. Bread at times doesn't come to men of wisdom and skill. But the Bible says time and chance happen to them all. I pray for you in the name of Jesus that the spirit of pride will not occupy your heart. Amen. That this message is a seed planted in your life. You will live by it. The devil will not succeed to push you to take the glory that belongs to God. I pray you will not lose your place. I pray that your ability to hear the Holy Spirit will be clearer than ever. I declare that this week is blessed for your sake. All you lay your hands upon to do this week shall prosper. It is well with you. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. And amen. Can we share the grace and fellowship? One, two, three, and let's go. The grace of our...